Hello, y'all. Today we are going to talk about the Border Gateway Protocol. Long, complex name, right? Just BGP will do, I suppose. But you might be surprised to learn a lot of new stuff in listening to this series. Although you may already think you know a lot about BGP, I would actually kind of suggest you don't skip over the initial ones and just stick with me for a little bit. We're going to begin right here on this title slide. This is actually pretty interesting. This is a picture of the napkin on which BGP itself was designed, BGP version 1, by Yakov Rector and Kirk Laufleid. Kirk was over at Cisco and Yakov was at IBM. Yakov later joined Cisco a long time after this. But anyway, this is the, a picture of the original napkin on which the BGP version 1 protocol was designed. It's interesting because you can see a few things that are still common today. In the state diagram, for instance, we have the initial state is disconnected. You have an open send, and then you have an open receive, and you see confirm wait and established, and send keep alive packet and stuff like this. And you can see here that they use TCP as the way to communicate for BGP. So this is a really interesting bit of history in case you're interested in this sort of thing. Now, let's begin by talking about what is the purpose of BGP. The purpose of BGP is to carry reachability information from a destination, for instance, 100 colon colon slash 64, which is the subnet on which F uh, is connected, or a topological location in the network, to B in order for, to route traffic from A over to F. Now we assume that B is the first hop in the network, that A just knows how to get to B itself, and B is where we're carrying the traffic forward through the network. So this reachability information must get from E over here to B. Now when I say this, I say reachability information. What is the difference between reachability information and a route? Because clearly, for, for B to be able to route information over to F or towards F, it must be turned, this reachability information must be turned into a route rather than just reachability information. So reachability information is essentially a topological location on the network, a destination, IP address, subnet, supernet, or whatever it is, whatever you might want to call it. So that is the basic concept of reachability information. A route contains more information. It contains, for instance, a path along which the traffic might flow. It contains next hops, for instance, D and E. So this information is a part of the route, but not part of the reachability information. In BGP, the NLRI, or the network layer reachability information, has a set of attributes. Those attributes, which we'll talk about much, much later, describe the, the other information that make the NLRI into a route. This seems simple, of course, that all we need to do is for E to advertise 100 colon colon size 64 to D and C, C to advertise it to, 2000, uh, to 65002, D to advertise it to 65001, 65002 and 1 to advertise it to 65000, which then causes it to reach B, which allows B to find the forwarding information to reach the destination. Things are not quite so simple, however. What if AS65001 up here is not a transit network? What I mean here is, for instance, let's say that AS65001, the organization that operates this autonomous system of the network within this autonomous system, pays by the byte or by the octet for sending information towards D. This is not an uncommon thing in the global internet. In that case, they might not want to carry traffic from A through their autonomous system to reach F. It would cost them too much money. What's their economic return in this case? Another possibility is that this link simply doesn't have the bandwidth. It's not scaled to carry this traffic. Another thing that you run into that's a policy sort of thing is that AS65003 may, for its own reasons, prefer to have the traffic destined to 100 colon colon slash 64 come in through C or use the path through 65002 rather than the path through 65001. Again, this could be because AS65003 pays for this link or pays for traffic across this link or across this link or whatever the case might happen to be. 
Another thing that AS65003 wants to be able to do is to hide these red links. These are infrastructure links for AS65003, and they don't want the information about those links to be leaked into the real world. Now, one thing we could try to do in order to solve all of these problems is use a standard routing protocol like RIP or IS to IS or something very similar. What you would need to do in this case, however, is you would need to set up filters that would be dynamic in the entire internetwork. So for instance, you might at the edge here of AS65000 create a filter that blocks the traffic going towards 100 colon colon slash 64 from passing out through AS65001. Now you'd probably do this as a route filter rather than a traffic filter. So you would adjust things so that 100 colon colon slash 64 is not advertised from AS65001 towards AS65000. But if you start thinking about it, this is very problematic because what you're going to have is you're going to have a mass number of filters that need to be managed and maintained. And you have to start asking yourself things like who is going to manage and coordinate all these filters? Another thing you would have to ask is, why is it that AS65003 should trust AS65001, 65002, or AS65000 to implement these filters correctly? What is it that's going to bring that trust level between these autonomous systems in this way? So what happens if these filters are messed up? What if the filter is installed here, but rather than blocking traffic to 100 colon colon slash 64, it blocks traffic to 101 colon colon slash 64. So who is responsible in this case to make sure that this filter is done correctly or is done the way that it should be? Who are you going to call? Who is going to fix these problems? So BGP is designed to fix specifically these problems. Now let's look at a few of the rules around BGP. These are going to help us understand the operation of BGP both within an autonomous system and outside an autonomous system. First, an autonomous system must look like a single thing from the outside. So for instance, AS65001 needs to look like a simple black box from the outside. So what this means is, is I don't want AS65001 to appear to have one policy towards AS65000 and a different policy towards AS65003. This also means that internal routes should not be exposed. These red links in here should not be exposed to the real world. Now another point to remember is that whoever has the packet will determine how the packet will exit their autonomous system. For instance, once a packet is sent from A traveling towards 100 colon colon size 64, when that packet reaches the AS65001 boundary, AS65001 determines how the traffic will be passing through AS65001 and where the exit point will be out of AS65001. It should be possible for an AS to ask very nicely, AS65003 might be able to say, I would prefer that the traffic coming towards 100 colon colon slash 64 come in through router D rather than from router C. So this should be possible to do. It should also be possible to ask for other sorts of special packet handling. Now we'll go into a little more detail later about what these special sorts of packet handling might be. But for now, just think that these are policy oriented things that an AS should be able to say to a peering AS, I want you to handle traffic a specific way. It should be possible to hide information when needed without impacting overall routing information. For instance, instead of advertising 100 colon colon slash 64, AS65003 may decide that it wants to advertise 100 colon colon slash 60. This should not have a major impact on the overall operation of the whole network. Now it may cause some traffic to be routed suboptimally, but that's just going to be the way it is. It should be possible to scale to hundreds of millions of routes and paths. So there is going to be a lot of information in a large scale interdomain network like this. We need to be able to scale to truly large, huge numbers in order to make this work. So again, to repeat a little bit, if this gray box is AS65002, then this should look like a single thing from the perspective of AS65001 
and AS65000. There should not be some sort of policy that looks different when you're looking at AS65000 too from the two different perspectives. Second thing is, the path to reach 100 colon colon size 64 from AS65001 should not be exposed. These routers and these links should not be exposed. So, for instance, these 20X links are what can be called infralinks or infrastructure links. These should not be exposed to the outside world. This 100 colon colon size 64 is what we would call a customer route. This is carried unmolested or unchanged largely through AS65002 so that AS65001 receives the reachability information it needs to reach that destination. So there are two possibilities to solve these problems, the infra and customer routes problems. The first is, is that I design a single protocol that will carry both of these infrastructure routes and my customer routes through the network. And it'll have something fancy in it that says, this is an infrastructure route. Please don't advertise it outside the network. It's quite possible to do this. In fact, it's pretty easy, but it adds a lot of complexity into the situation. Another option is to simply run two different routing protocols. We would call one of these an IGP or an interior gateway protocol, and we would call the other of these an EGP or an exterior gateway protocol. So the IGP would provide routing within the autonomous system, and the IEGP would provide routing between the autonomous systems. Why would you want to use two protocols like this? First is speed of convergence. It turns out that routing things at the scale that BGP needs to route them, tens of hundreds of millions of routes, does not effectively allow you to produce very fast convergence speed. This is just a quick quality cost trade-off that you've got, you have to deal with. And this is a very real triad that you've got to deal with. So the speed of convergence on an interior gateway protocol is always going to be much faster than the speed of convergence on an exterior gateway protocol. The second thing is, is I want to create failure domains. So I want to create, if I run BGP on top of an IGP, such as ISIS or RIP or EIGRP or OSPF or Babel or take your pick, whatever you want to, you're actually gonna have your customer routes in a separate failure domain than your infra routes. So this allows you to have a little bit of failure domain separation. Now it might be in some implementations of BGP, you would have to check your particular implementation that the IGP, IBGP and EBGP software processes are actually separated on the device in a way that still gives you a lot of failure domain separation. But sometimes that's simply not true. Another thing this gives you is the ability to have a clear separation between customer and infrastructure routes. This means you can apply policy differently and allows you to have a very clean visual perception of what is going on. So these are the main reasons that you might want to split up things into infrastructure and customer routes in using something like BGP. So in the next session, we'll continue talking about BGP and we'll try to think a little bit about how BGP forms or decides on loop-free routes.